Welcome to this OST2 course to learn how to use the built-in cryptography functions of the TPM. By using private material that never leaves the TPM, we can perform encryption over our sensitive data. This provides us with very high guarantees. The TPM has built-in commands for RSA encryption and symmetric encryption. However, we don't have, at this time, commands for ECC encryption. We can receive support for ECC encryption TPM commands with a firmware update in the future. To perform symmetric encryption, we would need naturally a TPM key of symmetric type, usually 128-bit AES. Remember that symmetric algorithms are regulated and their export restrictions. To check the capabilities of the TPM you have, we have a separate lecture. We can see what algorithms and commands are supported. Your TPM could support 192-bit, or 256-bit AES, or a different symmetric algorithm. Using the TPM2 Encrypt Decrypt tool, we can use our child key of symmetric type and decrypt input data, either from the standard input or from a file as a last argument to the tool. The output is stored by a file pointed to us using the dash O switch. Using the same tool and just adding the dash D switch, we are instructing the TPM to decrypt our data. Having the built-in symmetric encryption capability, we are able to have a workaround and make use of the ECC encryption that the ZPM supports. We create a primary key of ECC type and then generate a child key that is going to be wrapped in this primary key. This is not the same thing as using native ECC encryption over our data, but it has become something of an industry practice. And because symmetric encryption is usually quite fast, and also ECC is very friendly to memory constraint systems, we see this approach being used on bare metal embedded systems a lot. The TPM has built-in commands for RSA encryption. This is achieved using two tools, the TPM2 RSA encrypt and the TPM2 RSA decrypt. Notice that the tool can take the padding schemes from the TPM key. This information is set when the key was created. The tool can do this, but by default, it relies on using PKCS v1.5 padding scheme. This is an important detail. The other options are familiar. We have a dash C for the key that we're going to use. We have a dash O for storing the encrypted data. This tool does not support parameter encryption. The TPM2 RSA decrypt takes in our encrypted data and can have optional authorization using the dash P switch. This allows us to provide session for parameter encryption. The rest of the options are quite familiar. Here's an example. The first example does not use parameter encryption. Once we have our data, we execute the tools and we do the forward operation and the reverse operation. The second example starts a HMAC session for parameter encryption and feeds it to the TPM2 RSA decrypt tool. As you can see, we need to specify that we are feeding a session context. Using RSA encryption on the TPM can be rather slow. This is why I would recommend using an ECC primary key and the symmetric encryption we saw earlier. 